Hello, my name is Sean. I am a customer support specialist with LoadTrack. Today we will be doing the first of several videos on how to use LoadTrack Client. To start things off, I'll be taking you through the process of installing and setting up LoadTrack Client on your computer. LoadTrack Client is a software program that we have developed for our customers that wish to use LoadTrack as a full TMS solution. It allows them to not only dispatch and monitor loads, but also complete billing and payroll. To begin, we'll first need to install LoadTrack Client on our computer. So first, go to install.loadtrack.net, type in your company name, username, and password, and click the Install LoadTrack Client hyperlink. You may get a security warning, just hit Keep, and then click to install the application. Once it's installed, you'll be presented with the login area. Your SQL catalog will be supplied, supplied to you by LoadTrack. It's usually LT underscore and then whatever company name we have assigned you. In this case, I am going to use our GPS catalog. Then, of course, type in the same username and password that you used earlier. And now we are in. I'll go over some of the icons on the screen real quick. Login allows you to open a second instance of load track client if needed. Jobs is where you go to enter a load into the system. Routes is where you go to um, basically dispatch all these jobs. You also have a view of all your drivers. Um, billing is where you go, obviously, for billing uh, to bill out loads. Uh, analysis, we don't use this so much anymore. Um, most of this, uh, most analysis that is, is done through our web apps, which we'll cover in a separate video series. Messages can be used to send and receive messages to drivers in the trucks while they're on the road. Static jobs is where you go to set up jobs that occur on a regular basis and thus saving you the trouble of manually entering them every single day. Static projects is where you would Basically is where we go to assign drivers and trucks to these jobs, and we'll cover all this in later videos. Today we're going to be spending most of our time in the setup portion. So if you, you can either use the drop down arrow to get the specific setup options, or we can just click the setup button. Uh, you can set up separate defaults for any particular user in your system. I'm just going to stick with the admin for this video. To start off um, on the loads radio button here, load caution hours, um, it's the number of hours you have before you see a um, caution flag on a load that hasn't been set up or hasn't been dispatched yet in the system. Load critical hours is the amount of time before that flag turns red. We'll cover these uh, when we do the jobs tree. Enable automatic load and route posting. Um, this is for when you set up a static load, this allows the, those jobs to actually post to the system automatically. Days to post ahead is how many days from the current day those lo loads will appear in the system. Uh, most users choose between 7 and 10 days. You can use whatever value you like. Currently it's set for 3 days. Use load relations. This allows the system to use load relations and job setup, which we will cover more when we get into that particular video. And default stop time is the time in minutes that um, the system will assign to a job if no time duration is assigned to a particular stop. So, for example, if you just say a driver needs to get there at noon, if you don't specify a departure time, the system will automatically have that driver departing that stop at 1230. Um, go into the routes radio button, default origin and default destination. These allow you to specify an origin destination for a driver when you assign a route to them. Usually it's a terminal or a place where a driver would park his vehicle every day. And it just saves you from assigning it to every single driver when, you, when you're assigning loads. Just keep in mind, this is a global default, so say there's a specific driver that you want to use a different origin and destination, those will have to be changed manually. Um, 
we'll cover that more later when we cover routes. Default driver group is the driver group that you see by default when you open the uh, driver's window in the routes plane. We'll again cover that later. Driver caution hours, this flags the driver with a yellow icon in the route plane when their DR DOT hours are below this point. Driver critical hours, this flags the driver with a red icon in the routes plane when their DOT hours are below this point. Caution request and critical request, these um, flag the driver with a red or yellow icon when they're Coming up on a scheduled day off, either it's a weekend for them or for a vacation day. And we'll cover this more in more detail when we cover the routes plane. Real-time GMT offset. This essentially sets your time zone for the system. So negative 5 would be Eastern time, negative 6 would be Central, and so forth. Default route start time is the time the system will apply to a route when no time is given. So, for example, you just create a route with any putting any start or end times in it. The route, this is the time that the system will apply to that route to have it start. So, um, I have it set for 0800 here. Um, I recommend you set it to anything but midnight. Uh, most users choose anywhere between like 6 and 9 in the morning. Pre and post trip minutes. This um, adds a a certain amount of time to begin and end of a driver's day for them to complete things like their DOT inspections. And basically it lets the drivers know what time they really should be at the terminal to begin their day so they don't show up with just enough time to get in the truck and go without doing their paperwork and inspections. Default geofence radius miles when you um, create a new location in the system uh, and geocode it the system automatically creates a geofence around the location. Uh, by default, I think it starts at 0.4 miles. I recommend setting it to something lower. I have it at 0 0.05 miles for me. Um, you can change this to whatever value you like. Work week. This is for our timesheets. Um, you can use 60 or 70 hours. I generally recommend 70 because that's what the DOT work week is based off of. Um, you can use actual or engineered, actual being the actual hours that the driver worked, or the engineered hours, which would be the hours that you generated when setting up the routes. Verify driver carrier qualifications, satisfy load requirements before sending routes. This is for if, say, you want to assign certain qualifications like hazmat or forklift qualifications to a specific load. Um, this will flag you if a driver does not meet those qualifications. So, for example, if you have a hazmat load and the driver is not hazmat certified, this will give you a warning before you assign a hazmat load to that driver. Allow a new route to be created when a load is dropped on the driver. If the load is dropped on an existing route, it will be added to this route. Essentially, this allows you to put a load on a driver. So if this is not checked, you won't be able to assign routes to drivers. So we just recommend you leave this checked. Update route state when printing driver's report. Um, if you print a driver's report, this will flag the route as being checked in the system. And we'll cover that more when we do the routes. And on assign rotations when terminating drivers, if a driver's in a set up a static rotation, when you terminate that driver, it will remove them from the, ro the rotation. Um, I recommend you actually unassign them manually because this function does not always work properly. And we'll cover that more in a later video. The building defaults is for setting up your QuickBooks or Great Plains um, information if you use either one of these. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, for QuickBooks, the file mode is don't care, single user or multi-user. It's just what, are, what user in your system will have access to these files. Um, late arrival and departure exceptions. These are for, uh, it's primarily for our postal customers. Uh, we'll cover that more when we get into billing. Analysis. Most of our analysis is now done through our web apps. Um, this uh, very few of our users actually use this anymore. It basically gives you a series of graphs 
to graph out for what your expenses were and what your profits were and see where your um, bottom line is essentially. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can add fixed costs based on miles, hour, or flat rates, your labor rates, fuel prices, your fuel economy, whether you want your expenses to show as positive or negative in the graph, and then these are the defaults for what you want your graph to show you. Maps. Um, we have, All of our mapping is now done through our web app, so this is just kind of a legacy thing that we haven't removed from our system yet. Same with import and export. Reports. This puts all your company information in when you're sending a rate confirmation. Um, and this is just default information right here. Profile. These are all set up in our web apps now. Uh, it's basically your default DOT profile and default driver profile. And timesheet. We'll cover this more when we actually do timesheets, but this is all the various... Um, options you can use when um, uh, verifying a driver's time card. And again, we'll cover this in a later video. So that is the basics of setup. The last thing I want to cover with you is holidays. You can access your holidays either from the drop-down arrow here or from the edit window over here. Um, by default, there, are not, there is nothing in here. Uh, you have to add all your holidays manually. And I would also want to, like to point out to you that these are not updated automatically by load track once they're entered. So, for example, say Christmas Day. Um, it's currently set for 12-25-2007. Um, this is our test database, so we don't use these regularly. Uh, it's currently 2017, so I need to change the holiday the correct day. So I go over here, change the year, double click on the correct day, and now it is set properly for 2017. Now I would have to go through and do this for every holiday in our database, and we'll cover how holidays work with static runs in a later video. And that is all I have for you for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again soon.